Welcome to The Hero TV, where we delve into the lore, mechanics, and impact of iconic Magic the Gathering cards. Today, we're telling the story of Death Rite Shaman, a card that has captivated and divided the players since its release, from its roots in the mystical world of Ravnica to its banishment from key formats. Join us explore the rise, fall, and during legacy of this controversial card. <music> We hadn't visited the planar of Ravnica since 2006 Ascension, and the anticipation was crazy. Known for its shock lands and emergence of the Commander format, Ravnica was a beloved setting with high expectations for its return. In 2012, Return to Ravnica did not disappoint, introducing a slew of powerful cards like Abrut Decay and Sphinx Revelation. Among these was a seemingly unassuming card, Death Riot Shaman. A hybrid of Birds of Paradise, Scavenging Ooze, and Groom Lava Mancer that will soon become a cornerstone of competitive play. And before we move on, if you guys enjoyed the video, enjoying the FTG content and the lores for more, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, like, and share. Remember, it's one of the best ways to support the channel for free. So Death Ride Shaman is a 1 mana 1-2 one, creature. If you tap it, you exile target land card from a graveyard, add one mana of any color. If you pay the swamp and tap it, you exile target instant or sorcery card from a graveyard, and each opponent loses 2 life. If you tap it for green, you exile target creature card from a graveyard, you gain 2 life. On paper, Death Rite Shaman intrigued players with its versatility and low mana cost. It quickly proved to be more than just an interesting design as it dominated tables across formats. Its ability to manipulate graveyards, accelerate mana, and deal damage and made it a formal force in modern and legacy formats. Where fetch lands and graveyard strategies abound, Death Rite Shaman became a pivotal player, shaping the meta around its presence. As Death Rite Shaman's influence grew, so did the debate over its place in the game. Critics argue that it's the full deck diversity and homogenized gameplay, leading to predictable and less varied matches. A turning point came when it was banned from Modern and Legacy, a decision that shocked the community. The ban reflected the card's overwhelming power and the need to preserve the health and diversity of the game's competitive formats. Though banned in major formats, Death Rite Shaman's legacy endures. It remains a testament to the fine line between innovative card design and game warping power. The Shaman never broke into standard or pioneer in a significant way, but speculation persists about its potential resurgence. As magic evolves, so too does the context in which cards like Death Rite Shaman are evaluated, reminding us of the ever-changing landscape of this beloved game. Death Rite Shaman's story is one of the innovation, dominance, and reflection. It challenged players and designers alike to reconsider the balance between power and playability. As we close this chapter on one of Magic's most memorable cards, we're reminded of the lessons learned and the ongoing journey of discovery within the planes of the multiverse. Thank you for joining us on the Hero TV. If you enjoyed this dive into the lore and impact of the Red Shaman, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Until next time, keep shuffling and may your draws be ever in your favor.